Start the recording. All right, welcome light everybody on. to the um, Sacramento Speaker and Entrepreneur Network uh, first webinar of the year in 2018. It's February 6th. I am Katrina Sawa, your organizer, and um, this is Nakia Davida, our speaker tonight, and we're going to introduce ourselves in just a second a little bit deeper. And I'm sure people will be coming on, but um, thank you for being here on time. Uh, this is going to go out to the entire membership of the SAC Speaker Network as well um, as those who, but those of you who come live get the experience live and you also get to ask questions of our experts and you also get to share your own uh, spiel. So this is the benefit of coming live because your spiel and your introduction and your links, if you put them in the chat room, are gonna go out to our 2,600 members uh, every month. So you definitely wanna try to make this event live because you can't get in front of the 2,600 members otherwise. So uh, unless you have an event going on or something. Um, I just wanna remind you, if you haven't been to a live event yet, uh, you want to mark those on your calendar if you're local as well. Uh, so please go to meetup.com forward slash Sacramento speaker. Uh, mm, now what's the link? Sacramento speakers, Sacramento speakers network. So, but you can also go to sacspeaker.com. It's easier to remember. And uh, that's my website, but you can sign up to speak there. I do have a couple slots left for, for the in-person speaking. And I have, um, uh, I don't have any webinars, they're all booked, but there's some amazing speakers coming out this year. Um, and you might want to get on the list, though, because I might have a wait list for a backup. And so I'm just telling a little uh, updates and stuff like that. Hey, Mickey. Hey, Patrice. Nice to see you guys. Uh, so uh, again, a reminder to post your information in the chat room. So if you are not familiar with Zoom, there's a link on the bottom of your screen. And if you're not looking... Um, well, first of all, if you look up to the screen and on the right-hand side of your face, there should be a thing that says speaker view or gallery view. And you want it to say speaker view. You don't want to see a bunch of little dots. You want it to say speaker view so you can see all of us in the frame together. I find that's the best way to actually see who's who. And then you can see our names and stuff. And then down below is the little chat bubble, uh, and you, you wanna open that up. It opens up over on your right-hand side, and you can just be chatting with people uh, through throughout the presentation today. And so we're gonna go for an hour, and um, Nakia's gonna share some great tips on outsourcing and being the uh, COO of your business. And I know, I've known Nakia for a while, a long time, so um, you're, gonna, you're in store, and she has just a teeny tiny bit of time to share, but like a whole bunch of great information. And she's, you know, she could probably fill three hours right now, but um, uh, so, I, without further ado, I want to get to her in a second, but I told you if you came live and you came on time, you guys get to introduce yourself. So this is the benefit of showing up on time. So Laura, you were here first. Give us like a 30 second commercial of what you're doing. Um, make sure to say your website and anything you have going on, like an upcoming speaking gig or an event that you can drive people to. And then you can post the information in the chat. You don't have to give us it all. Um, and then I will copy the chat and put it in the email with the recording. So that's how it works. So Laura, go ahead, you go first. Okay. Well, I'm a life coach and mostly I work with um, open-minded driven professionals. You kind of feel like there's a little something missing in their life. Can't quite pinpoint it. Almost it feels like there's a barrier between themselves and where they want to go, sort of an invisible barrier, and we break through that invisible barrier. And I specifically work with energy as well. I work with the, the, the whole area around the heart. And I have a whole program that I'm just developing around that, and it's super, I'm super excited about it. And that was the book that I went with Katina's class with, and um, the barriers around the heart or the barriers that keep us from our success. And I'm at Laura Long book. Pro. Yeah, so you have a new book coming out and you have a program coming out around the book. So make yeah. sure you put your website in the chat room and any other details, that'd be great. How about okay. Paul? Yeah. <clears throat> Hey there, uh, I'm Paul Sathis. Um, I came here completely unprepared. This is actually my first time being in this group. And um, uh, in fact, I didn't even really realize when you said webinar, you meant webinar. You didn't mean audio, you meant video. 
So here I am, <laughs> kind of yeah. dressed in my sweatshirt and my running pants, and you know, look like a slob. But anyway, um, nice to meet y'all. Uh, my company is Bolster, and Bolster is a uh, technology firm that specializes in sales acceleration and customer contact te technology. And um, so I. Uh, talk about usually talk about software products all day a certain few specific software products and I am also working on a presentation coincidentally on um, just a general education uh, presentation on artificial intelligence in business and hoping it's an interesting presentation by the time I get to doing it but uh, that's me awesome welcome thank and, you hey it's great that you're here so how about Kim I'm gonna next yeah, gotta unmute myself there. <laughs> um, so I'm guessing you all know people who dread getting up in the morning because it just means another discouraging day at work. Not for us who love our jobs and yeah. our businesses, <laughs> but I know people. Um, so <laughs> as I work with people to either make the job they're in, make the job they're in better so they can stop feeling so trapped and start enjoying life again. again. Or if what they need is to get the courage to leave and do something different, that as well. Awesome. And you have a website? Yep. It's, uh, my company is Coaching Heights uh, because I live in Wyoming in Grand Teton National Park in the summers. And there are some good similarities between figuring out what you want in life and also getting to the top of a mountain. <laughs> Very cool. I love it. Well, make sure you put some more details in the chat room. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, Mickey. Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, know, somebody, was, somebody was waiting for it right uh, i'm mickey griffith i'm a referral marketing expert and business coach and uh referral marketing leads to so many things in business that there's a lot of general business coaching that just goes hand in hand i end up talking a lot about time management and efficiency and those things tied into credibility and visibility so uh, my expertise is in referral marketing uh, but when i coach i tend to talk about a lot of things awesome and you'll put your website in the chat, right? Yes, okay. Patrice? Hi, I don't know what happened to my video. What, what do you mean? Your video, we can see you. Oh, I can't see my, I can see all of you, but before I could see me too. I don't know, but we can see you, so keep smiling and okay. don't do anything silly. <laughs> all right. Okay, well, my name is Patrice Lynn, and I am just uh, finishing up my book, which is called Rise to Success, awesome. and the subtitle is remains to be determined. It's either going to be train your brain, change your life in just 15 minutes a day, or rewire your brain, recharge your life in just 15 minutes a day. And so part of what I talk about is that we know more about how to program our cell phone than we do, do our own brain. So I'm here to help people understand how to utilize their brain more fully to get the results they want in their life. And my Rise to Success is the signature program, and the Rise stands for Repetition, Images, Sound, and Emotion. So that's what my book is about. Yeah, so I'm excited to get out there and speak about it and... It incorporates quantum physics, neuroscience, mental imagery, space repetition. And um, yeah, so I'm excited to just share the things I know to help people use, utilize their brains more effectively. Very good. Good for you. Awesome. Well, I'm sure people, more people will come, but they're going to miss the introduction. They're only going to be able to chat in the room. So. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for coming on time. And my official introduction is uh, I'm known as the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach, and I love to kick people in their butts to get stuff done so they can make a lot more money doing what they love. And my book is Love Yourself Successful, uh, uh, a woman's step-by-step -step guide to finally taking charge of your life and designing the business of your dreams. So I talk all about systems and uh, marketing strategies, raising your rates and your confidence level so you can really make a lot more money. Also, I talk about love. This is the month of love uh, and how to not settle in your personal life so that you're happy over there, um, which attracts a lot more good clients, good clients and lots more money. So, so Oh, and I do have a um, live event coming up in April. It's Love and Money Live. It's all about getting more love in your life and money in your business. And you can find out more and get a discounted action taker ticket only through this Friday for um, $197. And then it's going up in price. So make sure you get on that at loveandmoneylive.com. So 
that's me. And um, we're going to share more. So if you aren't looking at the agenda, I just want to show you guys really quick, um, share screen with you, just so you're prepared on how this call is going to go. So we've got, can you see my screen? Um, so we do introductions. Yes. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and then I've done a few reminders. Remember, we can uh, uh, we can announce your speaking gigs and your live events in my email. So you just have to email me a little blurb on that if you have something going on. Um, then we do a speaker for about 15, maybe 20 minutes. Sometimes, probably not today, but I'm, uh, I'll be doing like a five minute jumpstart your biz tip, we'll see. Um, and then I wanna really kind of put somebody in the spotlight for a hot seat. Uh, so five minutes, we do this at the live meetings where if you have a challenge going on right now uh, or you want help with something like your book subtitle, right? So I'll randomly pick somebody uh, to do a five minutes in the spotlight. You can decline that, but it's good opportunity to, sh to get some masterminding and some feedback. So we'll do that right after the speaker. And then at um, sometime during the call, make sure you're posting in the chat room as far as if you have a free gift, uh, put the link to the page. Like I would put, go get your jumpstart your biz kit at jumpstartyourbizkit.com. Make sure you put a live link though. Don't just put jumpstart your biz kit, put www.jumpstartyourbizkit.com. That way it'll show up live and people can actually click on it and interact during the call. Okay. So whatever kind of free thing you can take people to, um, like a free webinar, a free teleclass, a free opt-in, that's what that's for, this last part of the meeting, but you can do it throughout the meeting as well. Just know that if people do pop on, they won't see previous messages. So if someone comes on at 20 minutes after, they won't see any of the thing in the chat um, beforehand. So I don't know why that happens, but it does. So I just noticed. Um, so that's kind of the agenda and what we're gonna do um, and so I'll be watching and muting you guys um, if there's noise because I want to give Nakia our full attention and I'm going to let her introduce herself and then go straight into her presentation. And like I said, I've known Nakia for, I don't know, 10 or 12 years or something like that. And <laughs> um, she's an amazing business mind. So you guys should learn a lot today, even in the short amount of time that we have. Okay. Any last teeny, minute questions? Teeny, tiny. Right? Any last minute questions? Okay. All right. Then Nakia, please introduce yourself and take it away. <laughs> Certainly. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys here since I do have some slides with you or for you, I should say. So let me get that uh, squared away and let's make sure I did this correctly. And this is slides. Can you see my screen yet? Yep. Okay. And you can see just the single. Nope. You want to do from uh, uh, Yeah, I, I have it. There you go. There it goes. Okay. All right. So what I would love to say is by a show of hands, how many of you would love to have the confidence to achieve any business goal that you set for yourself? I have. Thank you. And to make and keep more money, to have more time off, to have more fulfillment and fun so you can live the dream life that you've always wanted to right now. So if that's the case, then you're definitely in the right place. And I want to say a big thank you to Katrina for having me here to share this information with you. And I promise that I'm going to do everything I can in the short amount of time that we have to speak today to share a bunch of nuggets that you can find really valuable. So today we're really going to talk about how to get out of your own way to become a manifesting machine. And that's from the inside out how to turn overwhelm and procrastination into massive action, what to systemize to free up your time and stay focused and have the bandwidth to get everything done, some of the mistakes that people make, and how to run your business without your business running you. Because a lot of people I find, you know something's holding your back, but you're not exactly sure what that might be. And you, if, if you're anything like any other entrepreneur I know, you have a ton of stuff on your to-do list and not enough bandwidth to get everything done. And as you're growing, a common fear that I hear people talk about all the time is, I'm already maxed out. If I grow, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to work a lot harder and have less time than I have now and not be able to take great care of my clients and not even have a life in the, in the meantime. 
And so some of you might be saying, you know, I know I need systems and processes, but either I don't know where to start or I'm not good at it or I don't have enough bandwidth to do it and you're too busy working in the business versus on the business. All right, why is that not, there it goes. I know a lot of you have heard of Michael Gerber of EMeth, and really the bottom line is that systems and processes are the very thing that are what make you have a real business versus your own job that you created. And being your own boss, he says here, it's the worst job in the world because you're working for a lunatic. <laughs> so I want to really present you to the bottom line is be thinking about, even if you don't want to franchise your business and have multiple locations, things like that, but I want to invite you to have your business be so systemized and organized and even automated that you could do that with written processes and automation if you wanted to. That is the bottom line of what frees you up to really be the owner of your business instead of working so much in your business. And so I have some definitions process, system, standard operating procedures. We're gonna be using those terms throughout the rest of the talk today. So a process is a set of ordered activities to get something done. A system is a pr are processes that have been proven to work over time. Standard operating procedures are detailed written instructions on how to complete a specific function the same way every time so that it gets done exactly, specifically, precisely the right way as you would do it, and guess what that enables you to do, is to delegate it or automate it so you don't actually have to touch it after that. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of background about me, how I got to be an outsourced COO, and I like to jokingly say that my background is full of a lot of BS. So not the kind that you're thinking, although I'm sure there's plenty of that too. So I'll run through a little background to give you a heads up about where uh, I've come from. I like to say that I'm a born singer and a born systemizer. I grew up singing, writing music, songs, things like that. I used to have a recording studio. So very creative, very left, right hemisphere of the brain oriented. But I'm also a systemizer and I can systemize and organize anything, including things that people say are impossible to systemize. So I'm very analytical, very left hemisphere of the brain oriented, which to a lot of people that sounds like that would be pretty cool that I have both, but it actually set up some struggles about which one was gonna win. Well, the winner was the systemizer, unfortunately, although I'm reintegrating music back into my life as well. And the next BS is that I got a Bachelor of Science from the United States Air Force Academy, and then when I was in the military, I negotiated and managed as a project manager, contract negotiator, and contracting officer about $200 million worth of contracts at the age of 22. Then I, when I got out of the military, the next BS is business systems. I worked for a number of different companies in corporate America doing systems, operations, logistics, supply chain management, project management, contract negotiations, things like that. So all of those skills got very honed both in the military and in the private sector. Now, now it comes to how did I get into doing what I do? Well, as with all that experience, as I embarked on becoming an entrepreneur, which wasn't even in the systems area, it was actually around mindset and belief change, I didn't know, I was never trained on how to be an entrepreneur. So behind the scenes, as I was sitting in other experts' workshops and classes and events and so forth to learn how to become an entrepreneur, when they found out about my background as a systemizer and we started a relationship, they actually hired me to become a consultant to systemize and organize and automate their businesses. So some names that you see on the screen, Harvecker, Lisa Sasevich, uh, Wendy Stevens, Chris Howard, Allison Armstrong, and Fusionsoft, and many other transformational leaders that you may or may not have heard of, including people just like you. And so as I got to see so many different business models, I was able to bring that kind of experience to my own clients' businesses so that we could bring best practices to your business. 
So that's enough of my BS for right now. I'm sure there's plenty more that we can talk about later. But the bottom line today for you is I want to share with you how to win the entrepreneur game. And I call, there's a trifecta that I call the entrepreneurial trifecta, which is having all of the money that you want, all of the time that you want, and having the fulfillment and happiness that you want. A lot of times as an entrepreneur, we're juggling all the time, right? And sometimes we have uh, a ton of money, but no time or vice versa. We have a lot of time, but no money. And somewhere along the way, a lot of times we're working so hard that we're not always experiencing the fulfillment that we really desire both in our work as well as in our personal lives with family, friends, loved ones, etc. And bottom line, in order to win this game, you have to have the right belief systems and business systems, more BS to come. And that's how you can run your business without your business running you. So for example, one of the things that I did with Harv Ecker when he hired uh, myself and my, my former husband, his goal and vision was to sell his company in five years. This is back in 2006, 2007. He knew he had to remove himself from the day-to-day -day operations. At that time, he had about 250 employees that were scattered across four different locations. He was always complaining about firefighting and all the crisis and drama and people challenges. He knew he was leaking money because he didn't have good enough systems and processes. And in order to sell the business, which he did, in fact, five or six years later to success resources, he implemented the things that we set in motion those, those years ago. And we had to implement standard operating procedures and automation. And a big deal is putting in processes versus just adding people to the business instead which is the most important thing. So I want to raise your awareness of a concept that I think is really cool in how to think about yourself as an entrepreneur. And that is your first name not needed. Or like I'm Nakia, so I'm NNN, -N -N, Nakia not needed. This can only be achieved with the right belief systems and business systems to free up your business so that you're not in the way of it right? And so the first key to doing that is that we have to understand where are the blocks that, where, where do the blocks come from? We, we always see the tip of the iceberg where that's the symptom of many of the challenges that you may be experiencing in your business or in your life as an entrepreneur, but underneath the surface is really where everything usually uh, resides. And I have this formula that I want to share with you as we go through the rest of the talk. And here you can see your beliefs, particularly your subconscious beliefs. And I know we have someone on here who's an expert in that as well. Your beliefs lead to your thoughts, which lead to your feelings, which lead to your actions, which equal your results. So when you don't like the results that you have in your life, in any area of your life, but we're talking about your business especially, you need to go to the left of the equation to your actions. Obviously, if you do different actions, you can get different results. But what if you don't know the right actions to take? That's where Katrina and this community that she brings experts that you can see in person and live, this is where you get to get the information, the education, the skills, the knowledge, so that you know the right thing to do so you can take those actions. But what, a, what about when how many of you have experienced you know the right things to do and you're not doing them? That's when you need to go all the way to the left of the equation to the B, to your beliefs, particularly your subconscious beliefs. So how do you know if you have subconscious beliefs? You look at your results. If you don't have the results that you want, you probably have somewhere along the line that your beliefs are out of whack but they're not all created equal. And I call them the kingpins, which are the core beliefs, just like a log jam down the river, that if you remove the jam at the core of what's causing it, that's where you can unlock and unblock everything. Why this matters is that 99.99995% of your results are actually driven by your subconscious mind. 
your conscious mind processes 2,000 bits of information per second, but your subconscious 4 billion bits of information per second. Why do I know all about this? Because for years, one of my BS's is that I suffered from extreme PTSD as a result of being very brutally beaten growing up from about about age nine to about 18, like every day, which included hospital visits, stitches, the whole nine yards. And that resulted in a, a, a challenge with bulimia that I had for over 13 years, binging two to six times per day. And I tried all the traditional methods to overcome it. But when I learned how to change my subconscious beliefs and systemize the process subsequently to share with other people, that's really what made the difference and I was able to overcome that in about six weeks. So now I use those same teachings that you can reprogram. I systemize this so you can overcome your subconscious beliefs in minutes. So whether it's about public speaking, whether it's about making more money like Velma and tripling your income, whether it's filling your programs and starting new programs, selling out your programs like Brigitte did, that's what's possible when you open up the space in your own mindset. So now let's go back to the actions in that equation. How do you know what to do? This, uh, this equation, we're going to the A now. So how do you know the right actions? It's important to do the right things in the right stage, in the right order, at the right time, to get the right results with the right systems. Otherwise, you're spinning your wheels and trying way too hard. So this next piece that I wanna share with you, there are only three critical functions in business. Only three. Get business, do business, and keep score. And so get business is your marketing sales, doing business is the operations and fulfilling your, your clients and your programs, also product development, keeping score is the admin, the accounting, the metrics, et cetera. Now, successful uh, research has shown that successful businesses focus a certain percentage of your time in these key areas. So what I'd like you to do right now is jot down what percentage of your time and your business do you focus on these areas? Go ahead and just write it down. It needs to add up to 100%. And do it on a weekly basis so you don't, since you don't always do the same thing every day. Okay, ready? Would you like to know what the ideal percentage of time spent is for a successful business? 65% should be getting business, your sales and marketing efforts, 25% in doing business, and only 10% in keeping score. So let's break this down in terms of real life, what this might mean for you and your life and your business. So these are some of the get business activities. So doing strategy sessions, doing speaking, preparing for speaking engagements and strategy session, making your outbound calls for speaking engagements, for client prospecting, cultivating referral partners, affiliates, writing copy for your marketing, going to networking meetings, travel time. So just as an estimate, if you see on your screen there, that's like say 26 hours a week, right? Which sounds like a lot. Well, now let's look at nine through 12. These are some doing business activities. So let's say you do 10 client sessions a week. You lead, you lead a group call once a week. You have to prep for all that. And you're maybe working on a new product or a new product launch. So let's call that 10 hours. Now look at the admin all the keeping score activities. Maybe you have a team, so you need to meet with your team periodically, your onboarding clients, your returning calls and emails, scheduling, you're doing social media, you're doing the normal, uh, paying your bills, doing invoices, running errands, preparing reports, filing, things like that. Look at how much time that is, 30 hours. And that's if you're really efficient, right? So when you look at this in total, your numbers are all out of whack. A 66 hour work week for one, and I know for a lot of people, that's actually pretty low. And this is nothing to do with your personal life and everything going on, right? So these numbers, 39% get business, 15% do business, 
46% keep score. So how do we get this all in line, right? Ever feel like you're a contortionist with your time? So what would happen if you delegated a lot of those admin activities, number 14 through 20 on that screen? If you only kept the if you kept the get business and the do business activities and essentially delegated, automated, and systemized all the rest of those admin activities, you can actually get your keep score back down to four hours a week, which puts you in that perfect 40 hour work week and focusing 65, 25, 10% of your time. That's kind of how it looks when you really break down how you're using your time to optimize and systemize the right things and delegate or automate. And the reason why I say to delegate those other types of activities is you can delegate them to a lower dollar per hour person than you. So you can often delegate those items to a, 50, a 10, 15, $20 an hour person. And here's my rule of thumb. Any repetitive task that you do that takes more than 10 to 15 minutes of your time to do, you should actually be uh, systemizing it, delegating it, or automating it. Every 10 to 15 minute item that you do really adds up and just blows out your work week and your productivity. And then those non-revenue uh, generating activities that technology can automate should absolutely uh, be, be top of mind. And some of the processes that you can also automate are all of your get business uh, processes, all of your follow-up. Uh, many of you are familiar with Infusionsoft or other types of marketing platforms where you can automate all of those follow-up communications, your lead generation, your lead capture, your lead to prospect systems and processes. All of that can be automated. Your prospect to client processes, many of, and of those can be automated, and your long-term nurture campaigns. These are all things that technology can be leveraged to free up your time so that you can be doing the face-to-face, in-person type of things that you really need to do and only you can do. Does that make sense? And so systems and, and processes, SOPs, standard operating procedures that are written, they're not equivalent to technology, but they're necessary in order to get the flow proper such that technology can turn over. And that's example, one of my clients, many of you are familiar with Lisa Sasevich, that that was one of the things that we really did to free up her time. And we systemized and created standard operating procedures for many of the things that she did inside her mastermind, which has enabled her to scale that, mas that mastermind as massive as it is today to be a multi seven figure business. And she only works anywhere from, you know, less than 30 hours a week in her business, but she has a multi seven figure business. So that's what's possible when you systemize things, delegate and automate to systems. So we covered a lot in a short time, I know. It was a super tiny short amount of time, but essentially what you know now is how to get out of your own way and how to really get into massive action, how to free up some of your time by systemizing a lot of your processes, where you should be focused in those revenue generating activities, and that it's really important, even from a mindset point of view, that if, if you feel that you're in your own way in any area as you're growing into leadership to be a CEO of your business, just not working in your business, and if you have any blocks around hiring team and delegating, holding your team accountable, and using technology in your business at its maximum level, there's probably some subconscious beliefs in that you can overcome to free you up to be in harmony and alignment with getting all of that dialed in and getting out there with your message or your products or your services so that you can be as fully visible to the type of people that you want to attract. That is really how you win the entrepreneurial game. And it's never too early to start with systemizing your business you can start right now with where you're at. And I have an acronym for systems, save your sanity, time, energy, and money. 
And for SOPs, to me, that is making your success on purpose for sure. And in the right phase of business, I don't have time to go into this, but there are different stages and phases, aspiring, starting, growing, thriving, soaring. And there are different systems and processes that you should be focused on in each of those stages of your growth. Because if you do them out of order, the problem with that that you have some missing infrastructure and as you grow you're going to be growing on a foundation that's not solid so you need to put the right things in place in the right phase and stage of your business so you can launch and gain that maximum momentum for those stages of business and growing thriving and soaring otherwise you're going to implode and you're going to hate your life and your, and your team is going to be totally frustrated <laughs> So some of the ways that I support my clients is that I help you to maximize and master your operating systems from the inside out with your belief systems and your business systems. As your outsourced COO, I help you create those systems and processes and SOPs. I help you create your information products and programs. For example, I help you systemize your unconscious competence to turn it into a process that turns into your intellectual property to create your products and your programs. I help you project manage and do your product launches and things like that, and anything around leadership operations and just getting stuff done in general. And because you've already invested to be here with your time, of course, I wanna do something special for you and give you some free gifts, and I have it in the chat as well. But the first uh, gift that I have for you is a video tutorial that's me with my hair long before i dyed it and cut it short on how to communicate directly with your subconscious mind and identify the limiting beliefs in your subconscious mind now with my ultimate system of act i help you i train you how to reprogram your subconscious beliefs in minutes guaranteed as easily as editing a word processing document you edit you save and you're done so this is the first step in that process the second gift is around business systems. I'm giving you my process on how to create processes. So my SOP creation process is a uh, downloadable uh, tutorial that you can also uh, have as a free gift. And then the final one is uh, a breakthrough session directly with me. And I would love to talk to you about helping you have a breakthrough in your belief systems and your business system and identifying the most strategic thing that you can do have to have a breakthrough. And so for the first nine people, since this is going out to many people, not just who's here today, you can apply for that breakthrough session. And what we're gonna focus on is the right thing that you should be doing for the stage of business that you're in, and what are the missing belief systems and business systems to help you get to the next level, and if and how I can support you to get there. Because I want to be that bridge to bridge the gap from where you are to where you wanna go. And where you can go right now is outsourcedcoo.com forward slash Katrina. And Katrina is in lowercase letters, K-A-T-R-I-N-A. -A. And you can go there to get the free gifts. And that's what I have for everybody, Katrina. So thank you guys. And uh, if we have time, we can open it up to questions. We do, we have a little bit of time. Uh, if you guys haven't seen this, uh, the chat room, I did put that link in the chat room again for you. She had put it up top and then there's been some activity since then. Um, okay. <laughs> but I just reposted it for you. Great job. Awesome. Great job. Woo! That was a lot to get into <laughs> a short, tiny amount of time. <laughs> awesome. so I'll stop the share. <laughs> so this will be a great show for people to model after, uh, for the upcoming speakers. Um, that are doing webinars because they're all like, oh, 15 minutes or like, <laughs> I know, but uh, <laughs> I don't want to have this be a two hour long thing. I don't think we need that. So right. like, it's a great taste and I'm all with you. If you guys read the notes, it's funny. I'm like, yeah, automate, delegate, systematize. Yeah. The, you know, I have two brains. The name of the game. I know you're all over that yourself. And, yeah. uh, but I'm left brain, right brain too at the same time. So it's kind of fun. Anybody have any questions for Nakia? You're all muted, but you can unmute yourself if you click the button or if you don't know how to chat something. Yeah, Laura, go ahead. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, I, I'm one part I have not yet automated, which is the close. 
um, the the um, initial conversation and sample. I give a sample, a uh, little bit of a mini session and an assessment, and that's all good and fine. But that doesn't always feel like the right time to do to do the um, the close to talk about the whole program and in your strategy that. session. You mean? Yeah. Yeah, in okay. my strategy session. Yeah. So I do have some animations in place, um, but I'm I'm open to I want to hear some ideas about how you can animate that that the close pretty much or does that have to be per so my limiting belief is that it has to be personalized. Okay, so I think I'd need to know a little bit more about your business. I'm not sure if we have all the time. So if I understand your question right, what what I do. For example, in there's in my breakthrough sessions or strategy sessions, I have a list of standard questions that I ask everybody that I can then quickly assess if I can or can't help them. And if so, what really is the best fit if there is anything or I can refer them to someone else and so forth. So as a result of that assessment, my suggestion, you may already have this, is to make sure that you have those questions really dialed in that highlights what you need to know very quickly. Do you have that in place first? Um, not for this latest program. And I used to have that. And I think oh. you, you pointed you pointed to that being very, um, very direct missing link there. So that's good. So yeah. that's, so that's one area that I would say can be honed in to be better systemized. Okay. And then, in the process of doing, if you're on the phone with them, I think there's no stronger close essentially than to, um, if you have a sense of your packaging, of what you, what are some of the maybe good, better, best offerings, depending on if people are more time sensitive or money sensitive, and you can have different levels of programs and products that are you know, would mainly appeal to your ideal clients at different levels. Do you have some standard packages in place that when the right fit shows up, you can just make that offer right on the spot and either send them to a sales page or something like that right away? Yeah, I kind of do. I do. I just wanted to automate it even more with the less talk. With what part? Um, with the the decision making to help the client with their decision making so that it's not just a, an engaging conversation that it's more real clear for them to be able to make their choices. So, but you've given me some ideas. I, I don't want to take up I, time, but you've given me Yeah. Some I don't necessarily introduce automation inside of the breakthrough session, okay. but in your post follow up, if for example, it wasn't appropriate to make an offer right then and there, which I would question that as well but in the uh, in the post follow-up you could automate some of the follow-up there where if you had a little animation or a video that um, yeah, consolidates yeah. what you talked about yeah you can certainly introduce automation there but I would say while people are right you know front and center with you I would say that you're better off not doing automation there. And if you really want to automate your sales process, that's where you want to do, um, whether it's a webinar or a speaking engagement, a teleseminar, those things, you can have a pre-recorded sales presentation that invites people to a sales page. And then that whole entire process is automated and you can run that evergreen, you know, how, whatever, frequency you desire, even uh, you can have them listen to that, whatever automated sales presentation and send them directly and you never have, even have to touch, um, speak with them at all. So I would say either a launch on the front end or you can introduce some automation on, on the back end in your follow up as well. Well, thank you very much. That's some great ideas. I appreciate that. Okay, awesome. great. Good. Anyone else? Anyone yeah, else? Hey, Nikia. We have time, maybe one uh, more. That's okay, one more, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hey, this is Paul. So good, great ideas. Um, really, really good presentation. Um, so are you, do you in fact, is that what you do? Do you have um, 
packages of time, so to speak? Uh, I have several different, so depending on which, I have, a, I have several different um, aspects of my business. So there's a belief system. So I have all my BS systemized. So my okay. belief systems, my business systems, and I also have some body systems for energy, vitality, et cetera. So I have, a, uh, I have different levels of support in each of those business areas. So for the, the business so you, systems. You, you initially, yeah, you, you initially categorize somebody as to really what, which of three branches they're needing to travel yes. down. Is that accurate? In my case, most people don't necessarily have those branches. In my case, yes. So I'm assessing sure. based on where they're coming from, where their biggest need is, we're identifying there. Now, mm -hmm. for some people, they might need all of it and they might be up for all of it. You know, of course, that's my larger package, right? Where someone might engage for a year with me at a certain price point to get the whole enchilada. So that's mm -hmm. possible. Most people are more budget sensitive, so they might start off at a smaller package and then we evolve in, in the <coughs> relationship over time as they get to have a fabulous experience, then we just keep moving forward. But initially, I do have several, I have like three different levels okay. of package for each for one. Each of the branches. Yeah. And here's the good thing, I have those canned packages and if someone's not really a perfect candidate for one of those packages, we customize it and tweak it a little bit mm -hmm. so it's a, a just right perfect fit. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? Interesting. Yeah. Thank you. This way you're not always figuring out, oh my gosh, what should I, you know, what should I put together for them? Right? Because right. that's not empowering. So if you have a basis, a template to go on that you can tweak and customize, then uh, and that's and that's part of the relationship and the collaboration with the person that you're speaking with. Yeah, awesome. Got it. Makes sense. Awesome. Yeah. You should uh, go check out a strategy session with her, a breakthrough session. <laughs> but yes. um, Nakia, check the chat room really quick because I sent you a quick note. Um, any? Uh, we'll take one more question if anybody oh, has. Oh, that's weird. On here's the systemizer having having a breakdown in the system. <laughs> so. So here, let's put a different one. You. That's weird because my person if it's just, just me that that was up. So instead, we can go to, well, that's a, go to gifts. And I'll know anyone who comes through. So I'll get that fixed right away, obviously. Um, that's embarrassing. See, even the best systemizer sometimes has a breakdown in the system. Yeah. And... You know, that's life, but we fix it right away and we make sure it doesn't happen again. So you can go to outsource. So here's the backup outsourcecoo.com forward slash gifts will take you to the same place. Yeah, but try Katrina first in case. Yes. It should yeah, be we'll get that. Yeah. And so I know there was someone joined us on the phone and uh, we don't know who you are. So just you want to say who you are so we know who you are. Oh, hello. This is Katrina B. Hi, Katrina B. I was invited by Patrice Lynn. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad you showed up. You missed a lot of it, but there'll be a replay, and you can uh, catch the replay, okay? Awesome. Great. I was on another business call and just got this, so I was delighted to join you even to now. Thank you, Katrina. Well, yeah, bring come back next month or tomorrow in person. <laughs> okay, excellent, excellent. Thank you. All right, so I want to um, put somebody in the hot seat. Anybody want to take a hot seat? We kind of did you, Laura, already a little bit, but um, anybody, uh, Patrice, and we can't see you on video now, just an FYI. I don't know what happened, but we could before, and now we can't. So hmm. if you, oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> so if anybody wants a hot seat, raise your hand really quick. Okay, Patrice, there you go. So, <laughs> all right, so um, what, uh, I'm going to unmute you. Do you have... We have about four minutes, so sh share your challenge or your question quickly so we can give you feedback, and all of us, anybody can give feedback, so. Okay, I don't have a visual on this because everything's online. Okay. I am really working on getting the subtitle of my book together. Yeah. So my book is called Rise to Success because the RISE is an acronym and, it, and it's a benefit statement that people want to have more success. But, and the subtitle is really important because that's where people are going to find out that it's a book about the brain and working with your brain to get the results that you want in life. 
So I had one that was a working title that nobody voted for because I put this out for a lot of voting. But right now it's down to two. And the first one, um, oh, I wish I could show you. On the book cover, there's like a, a light bulb with the brain in it and a little uh, cord. So it shows ideas and the brain and plugging in and recharging, like just like we have to recharge our cell phone. The, that subtitle, one of the subtitles is rewire your brain, recharge your life in just 15 minutes a day. Mm. So there's that one. And then another one is train your brain, change your life. And it could be in just 15 minutes or in just 15 minutes a day. My process is a rise to success journal that's a 15 minutes a day process. So I really feel better about saying in just 15 minutes a day instead of saying in just 15 minutes. So real quick, everybody put up a one or two in your hand. Okay, so yeah, so one is rewire your brain, recharge your life in just 15 minutes a day. And then two is train your brain, change your life in just 15 minutes a day. Okay, so one. Okay, so all right, so we have three ones and one two i see no mickey you have one as well okay so four Everybody ones said one except for laura so okay. it's a and what is it that you like about that what are some comments that you have rewire sounds better than train it sounds like work okay. my, my my comment is just the second one um i, I feel like i've heard that before yeah okay first okay. one sounds a little, little catchier a little more unique mm -hmm. okay good i like Thank the 15 you. minutes a day good yeah, because that helps people go, oh, well, I could do that. I mean, my whole concept is based around that it's a small amount of time. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, I kind of felt the same way that change your life. It's like so many people talk about change your life, but recharge your life seems like something more doable Positive. and yeah. not a lofty promise, right? Kim says it's more active. Yeah. Okay. Wow, everybody likes that one. So that was easy. Done. All right, good. Let's go, Let's go to print. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other thing is the font. Okay, now what do you think about this? I wish I could show you. I can't do a share the screen from where I am, or can I? Uh, you might be able to. Let me see. Because I have the, because see, the font is the other thing. There seems to be a question you can share around. Screen. Just press the green button. Just have it ready to go. Okay, I've got it ready to go. Okay, let me see here. Let me drag this back up. Oh, let's see. Oops, that's not it. Press the green button. Okay, there we go. We have one minute. Okay, share screen. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Now you can see the cover. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so on the left is the scripty oh, font, is. and then the blocky <laughs> font. What's that? We see it. Okay. So let's see. Um, so this is the big thing. Uh, people are voting for, for the top, you know, between the two, and one has gotten way more votes than the other. But one of my friends, who I consider to be very smart, she said, Patrice, neither of these fonts work because they're too, um, they're not substantial enough. She said, I think when you have the word success, it needs to point up or to the right, and it needs to be more substantial looking. They're too artsy. Now, we were going for a left-right brain look, and so we had block print and then flowy print and the picture and all these things, uh, but I'm just curious of what people think about that. It, does the rise to success need to be more substantial looking and not so artsy? Patrice? Um, yes. I've been in uh, graphic design, marketing, communications for a long, long time, mm. and I say your friend is right. Neither of those fonts work. I, I love the light bulb logo, the light bulb brain thing. I think that really works. And a lot of the, all the straight font works really well. But either one of those artsy fonts, they're, they're not working. They're too artsy. It needs they're, to be something more they're common. Not, they're not, um, sophisticated. Um, yeah. They're not sophisticated enough. They don't mean business enough. Um, well, I don't know that, though. Not that you want to be just all business. I get that. It's not that you want to be just hardcore business. Um, but I they, don't want to be sophisticated or businessy. It isn't a biz book about business. It's a book about a holistic approach to life, not they, mm -hmm. I fully understand that. Mm -hmm. and both of these fonts still say it's an amateur design. Okay. I, I disagree. I'm, 
I like the artsy one. I like the one on the left all the way. I hate all caps. I hate, hate, hate all caps. Yes. 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 I'll definitely say I like, I like the font on the left, the rewire your brain, recharge your life. I like that font better yeah. than the all caps yeah, for sure. Too. But yeah. I think rise to success could have a little something, something. Um, it, it looks yeah. more like a children's book font versus a, reprogramming and rewiring your brain for success. So do you think I this would, one does as well though? Do you think this looks like a children's font? Yeah. I'll say I like your name on the bottom on that one. I like I like that font for your name. I don't like it for oh, rice success. Yeah, but you don't want more than yes. two fonts on a book cover. Understood. Understood yeah. that. Yep. See five to one people have voted for this over the other one. And there yeah. was another one. It is better. It's better than the other one. I, I, yes. There's, there's a bazillion fonts out there, though, and you really, you know, I would, I would keep pushing to get the right font. Okay. Thank you. I, I'm, even, I'm even okay with the two success part. It's the rise part, right. I think, that is more challenging for me. The two success and the rest of it, I think it's just the word rise is the – is if that was tweaked a little bit, I think you could be really close. Yeah. And what about if there was space between the R and the rise? I started looking at that thinking the I and the R are kind of mushed together and maybe that no. makes it. How's it look with the IESC in lowercase? Does it look any better? Well, the point though is the an acronym. rise is an acronym. an acronym. Right. So I want- What if, um, why don't just take, so what if you did rise in the same font as the yellow wording? And then you left the two success in your name and the other. Try that. Then you're still with two fonts on the whole book and rise is much more. And Patrice, if I can offer one more, one more bit of advice and then I'm going to leave it alone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, uh, design by committee is often the very worst kind of design. Yeah. yeah. Give, yourself, <laughs> give yourself a date, give yourself an end date and you pick what you love because you're the one <clears throat> more than anybody else and designed by committee often ends up looking like you know this okay. elephant is a government specifications so yeah okay thank you so much for the feedback i'm so glad i could show you the actual design yeah. but i mean are there things that people like about the design i mean i like the colors i like, like everything else yes everything like else it. works i love the brain logo and the and the light bulb that's that's yep. fantastic. It's really sharp. See, I wanted to have a sun. I was originally going to do like a mountain with the sun, but Patrice, thought, we got to cut you off. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. But yep. great job on that. <laughs> Would you mind pressing the stop share button for me? The, That'd be okay, great deal. Sure. Appreciate it. Okay, cool. That was awesome. That Thank was a great you. Example. Thank you so much. Masterminding. Yeah. Uh, we only have a couple more minutes. Good job, you guys. Did everybody <laughs> post? Yeah, thank you for sharing. Everybody was sharing either in the chat. So read the chat over there, Patrice. Okay, um, great. And uh, make sure you post all your links again if you want to. I have looked at some of your websites while we were on here today. And uh, thank you so much for sharing. Is there any last questions or comments from any of you about the format, uh, things that you wish you saw or wanted more of or any feedback for me? Uh, a quick question. I know you're low on time. Does this go, does this go live or is this, uh, I, I know not much about this group. Is this an online only group? This is a in-person meetup meet right, that, that. Okay. that decided to also host a webinar once a month because we have so many members and hardly, I mean, the teeny tiny percent of them come in person. So I thought, well, I'll open it up to catch a bunch of people who can't come live. So yeah, we meet on the first Wednesday of every month for lunch in the Roseville area. Okay. Uh, and then we meet on the first Tuesday of every month for the webinar at 5 p.m. Um, okay. Pacific. And that's, that's open to anyone in the world. So anybody could join us. It doesn't have to be Sacramento. Um, the only exception is like July. I think July 4th is a Wednesday. So we're doing the in-person on Thursday. And then November and December um, might be uh, varied uh, dates as well. But all, the schedule is always all posted throughout the year right now. And in fact, all the webinars are booked with speakers. Almost every um, month is booked for an in-person speaker now. Uh, 
I am still looking for a couple 10 minute speakers and maybe one more 20 minute speaker toward the end of the year, but you don't want to wait till the end of the year to sign up because yeah. it's booked probably in the next couple of weeks. So you can go to sackspeaker.com mm -hmm. for more information on that. Um, but yeah, go to the meetup, make sure you're interactive in the meetup and um, meet with each other. You can message each other there, you know, uh, it's a really good community. And so I'm going to post this. You're all going to be live and uh, the pictures and everything. And I'll be sharing it on Facebook and promoting the next one with a picture of us that we're all here. So yay. Yay you for showing up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Any last minute uh, questions or comments? Well, just thank you. Thank you for doing the live and allowing us to have an extra avenue in. It was fun. Appreciate yeah. it. And yes. thanks, thank uh, you yeah. for sharing Nakia. Appreciate it. Yeah. Everybody go check My out pleasure. her website one way or the other, will you? And I'll I'll send out the recording. Okay. okay. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you.